Almost four years ago, I made the decision to apply for St. Lucia citizenship by investment. I talked about it at the time, and for years now, I have been a proud St. Lucian. Many people have asked me why I chose St. Lucia's program over others in the Caribbean, and today I'm going to walk you through not only a little bit about the program itself, not only about the strategy that went through my mind when making my decision, but also about the human element that I think is so important yet so overlooked. Hi, I'm Andrew Henderson. Here at Nomad Capitalist, we help seven and eight figure entrepreneurs and investors who want to legally go where you're treated best. You can learn more at nomadcapitalist.com. And this is my St. Lucia passport. It doesn't have quite the heft if you're used to a US passport, but for me, this was one of my passports to freedom. 48 pages that allows me to go to a lot of countries around the world that are important to me. And so before we talk about why I made the decision personally to choose St. Lucia as one of the passports I ultimately obtained, let's talk very briefly about the program itself. So St. Lucia was the, one of the more recent entrants into the Caribbean Citizenship by Investment Program. Uh, it is one of the five countries that offers this. It is one of the two least expensive countries for single applicants, which I'll talk about in a little while. And in terms of visa-free travel, it offers a pretty standard map, what I would say, for Caribbean citizenship programs. You can go to all of Central America and, for the most part, the Caribbean, with the exception of Mexico. You can go to most of South America, with the exclusion of Brazil, Uruguay, and Paraguay. You can go to the UK and Ireland, owing to its Commonwealth status. You can go to uh, Europe's Schengen area, as well as the countries like uh, Romania and Bulgaria, which are uh, set to join that area. You can go to a good amount of places in Southeast Asia, to South Korea, where you can't go is the U.S., Canada, Australia, New Zealand. You'll need another passport or a visa if you want to go to those countries, if you don't have some other passport uh, besides St. Lucia. So, relatively standard. Uh, they are the only country out of five in the Caribbean that does not have and has not yet negotiated visa-free travel to Russia, for example. They do not have visa-free travel to Serbia, for example. Uh, and so there are some small countries that you are missing out on, some of them that all the citizenship by investment programs in the Caribbean miss out on, and, and some that St. Lucia just hasn't been as aggressive in pursuing. So that's an overview of the program. If you're single, it's a $100,000 donation to the country once they approve you through their due diligence process. There are, of course, legal fees, due diligence fees, passport fees, other fees that generally come with this type of program. And there have been various specials more recently for families, um, for married couples, uh, and so there have been different options depending on how many people in your family you have. And so four years ago almost, uh, I had just been interviewed by the BBC about this new option from St. Lucia and about citizenship by investment in general. And I sat down and I had a conversation uh, with a couple people about you know, whether I should pursue this option for myself. Because about a year earlier, I had started the process of becoming a citizen in Dominica. Uh, back in 2015, 2016, Dominica pretty much had the market cornered for the most cost-effective citizenship for a single person before St. Lucia reduced their price shortly thereafter. And so I had started the Dominica process, and the challenge that I had back in 20. Uh, early 2016 was I was traveling so frequently uh, and I didn't really have anybody to help me because we had just started uh, really helping people in earnest with holistic plans uh, that I didn't have many people to help me. I wanted to make sure that the customers that we had were taken care of first. And so uh, I was basically doing it on my own while traveling. And it was really hard to get some documents and I just eventually gave up on that process. So fast forward to uh, early 2017 and I'm having this conversation about St. Lucia. And what someone tells me is, they said, listen, this is your business. You're helping people do this. Uh, and they said, at the very least, you will gain mastery. You will gain an understanding of the process, and you will be someone who, who lives what he preaches. Now, I've been living overseas for, for years. I had you know, other passports. Uh, I had you know, business overseas. I was you know, eating my own dog food. But they said, you know, why not take it a, a step further? Why not have this extra insurance policy? And I think for me, the decision to add a passport from the Caribbean, even though I had other second citizenships, was, you know, the idea that 
with the way things were going in the world, and, and at this time, you know, Donald Trump had just come into power in the U.S. People weren't entirely sure what was going to happen. I have, if I said, as I've said many times in, in the past, I had concerns about America first. I know some of our viewers disagree with me on that, and they think that I, I simply misunderstand it, but I saw it for what I think it is, and I believe I was proven right. If you're an American overseas, we're going to punish you in an effort to get you to come back and take advantage of our lower tax rates, uh, even though you can pay less overseas. And so I just thought to myself, you know, let me secure my access to a few additional countries that would be difficult to visit if I had to give up my U.S. passport that I didn't have at that time with the other passports. Let me get as many options as possible. And uh, I decided to do it because I wanted to benefit our audience. I wanted to benefit myself with more options. And you know, little did I know that a number of months after I made the decision to start the process, I would be uh, renouncing my U.S. citizenship and I would want all the options that I can get, uh, not only for traveling, but for you know, having passports for bank accounts, uh, for having passports for any number of reasons. And I'm glad that I did that option. And I think that what it taught me is uh, even if it's uncomfortable, have more options. Commit to spending the money. Uh, I was doing certainly well then. I'd accumulated money over my years of running different businesses and, and now Nomad Capitalist. And I thought, you know, it's a small price to pay. And, you know, if your net worth is X.2 million versus X.3 million, are you really going to notice it at a certain point? You know, go out and, and get yourself covered. And again, in my case, you know, develop mastery. And so as a consumer, uh, not just a person who who helps people get citizenships while sitting in Switzerland, for example, or sitting in Canada. I know what it's like, and I know the discomfort, um, particularly as someone who has been a cost-conscious entrepreneur for much of my life and had to retrain myself to be much more abundance-minded. Uh, it's always difficult to say, I'm going to go and donate $100,000 and pay some fees, even if you're me and you get wholesale rates. So I understand. But I also know I had to push myself through that to make the decision. Uh, and so... That was the human element. Now, why did I choose St. Lucia uh, in particular? Um, because of that cost issue, and because I, did not, I didn't see a substantial difference in the quality of the passports, and because I figured I would never live there, and because I had other citizenships that I feel and felt and still do feel are tax-friendly as well, uh, I, th I felt like I didn't need to get a citizenship in a tax-free country. I had that already well covered with other parts of my plan. Um, other passports at the time were more expensive than they are now. You've seen some price wars happen since I made my choice. Um, about the time I, I renounced U.S. citizenship, you started to see some of the hurricane discounts from like St. Kitts. I still would have gone with St. Lucia because I just didn't see the benefit in my particular situation. What I would say is for some people, spending an extra $30,000 in Antigua to have a tax-free country or spending an extra $50,000 in St. Kitts to have a tax-free country is worthwhile. In my particular case, having, having already done stuff, it wasn't. And so it was Dominica versus St. Lucia. There was a little bit, I won't say have a bad taste in my mouth from Dominica. I think Dominica runs a very responsive uh, citizenship by investment program. But I kind of like the fact that St. Lucia um, was not as good as, at promoting its program. They don't issue as many passports. They're not going around and, and promoting as much. And so while that is why they don't still have, I would believe, uh, visa-free travel to Russia. They haven't been as aggressive. I felt like for someone like me who was developing this passport portfolio, you know, keeping the slightly more under-the-radar option would be, would be better. I also just think it's a beautiful country. Um, I also like the idea that it had a little bit better connections, uh, such as flights to London, whereas Dominica... Um, while they're building and they're working on an international airport, as I know now, uh, it has not had as good of connections. It's, it's harder to get there, whereas St. Lucia was better connected to London and, and to Europe in general, as well as to the U.S., if that matters to you. And so I kind of felt like all those things were, uh, were helpful. I also felt like the passport from St. Lucia complemented other passports I already had well. And so, you know, this is a question you have to ask yourself. If you want visa-free travel to Russia, but you already have some other passport that offers it, then suddenly that advantage no longer matters. You know, in my case, um, I really was gearing up to spend more time in the Americas in the next year or so. That changed somewhat because I got into a relationship with my 
now wife, uh, and so some of that travel got put on hold. But, you know, Brazil, for example, was one big country that St. Lucians don't have visa-free access to. However, I had another passport which already had that access. And so if my goal was traveling all over the Americas without getting visas, then I might have spent a little bit more money if that were my only second passport, because I would want to retain that access in case I had to leave the U.S., which, of course, again, months later I did. But since I already had that, that covered, I felt like, what are the gaps I need to fill in? And I feel like St. Lucia filled in those gaps for me. And so you might want to look at things a little bit differently. So would I make the same decision today if I were to go back and make the decision over? Uh, you know, it's, hindsight's always 2020. And so would I be willing to spend an extra thirty or $50,000 to get a passport with a little bit better visa-free travel or with a tax-free, you know, no income tax policy? I, I think that if I were to do it again today, sure, I might spend more money. But today I also happen to you know, to be married, uh, you know, I'm looking at having children potentially, and so I might look at, you know, a country where the, the price for adding children in the future is less expensive. Uh, since these passports generally don't, you know, pass down, you would need to pay extra later. So I might make a different decision today, but if I were to go back in, in hindsight, I think I made the right decision um, because I think St. Lucia has been a good program. I think the process was straightforward. Now, what people don't know about these processes is, you know, you do get a stack of paperwork this thick to deal with, you know, we generally help people with that. Back when I was doing it, I, I gave it to my team. I was the first case that we, we train people on, or one of the first cases. Uh, and so they've learned how to handle this paperwork for folks because getting this stack of paperwork is pretty overwhelming. And again, that's why I gave up on Dominica the first time. So I think I would make the same decision again, but it's only because of, you know, being in the status that I was then with, with being single. Um, seeing that there were only two options there and the more expensive, and the other passports were much more expensive. Were I to do it today in my current situation, given the current prices, I think it would, be, it would be much more competitive. And so if you're looking at citizenship by investment, I think you've got a relatively competitive field to choose from depending on where you need to go visa-free, what other passports you have or plan on getting and are willing to wait for visa-free travel. Um, you know, how important is it to you that you have a tax-free country to go to again? I felt pretty good that that was covered. Um, but if you want you know, to get one second passport and you want to protect yourself from, from high taxes in the future, you know, might be worth paying extra for that. So those are the factors that I would consider today. Um, given my situation, I think I made the right choice. As someone who enjoys having lots of options and who enjoys the mastery of this process as the nomad capitalist himself, there may be other passports from the Caribbean that I may obtain in the future uh, more for fun or increasing just other personal lifestyle opportunities. But I think for one Caribbean option in my situation, I made the right choice and those are the reasons why. How can Nomad Capitalist help you? Four ways. Number one, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell to make sure you get our new video every day. Number two, get a copy of Nomad Capitalist, the book. You'll learn a lot of my personal experiences over a dozen years of studying this stuff, as well as exactly some of the strategies that you can use to build your Nomad Capitalist plan. Number three, if you're not sure where to start, but you want to come and learn from my team and I, you want to come and mingle with like-minded people, learn more about our live conference, Nomad Capitalist Live. It's coming up soon. And number four, if you want some help right now because you've got a burning issue, you need something solved, you want to lower your taxes, get a second passport, or build the Nomad Capitalist lifestyle of your dreams, go to nomadcapitalist.com and click on Become a Client.